Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about a trajectory that has maximum acceleration limits. So acceleration cannot be more than so much. And that's because uh, the torques of the motors running it don't have more than uh, so much uh, values, right? So much uh, torque and uh, zero velocities at the end. So you start from zero. You can go up to so much acceleration and then you have to go back to zero to travel from some initial angle to what to some final angle we want to achieve that with minimum time possible how can we do that so if you look at the one of my videos under robotics called trajectory generation in that video i talked about what we call lspb linear segment with parabolic blend curve where the middle part of it is a line, constant velocity, and initially you start going up with constant acceleration to that linear part, and then you decelerate with a, a negative of that initial acceleration back to zero velocity and to the final angle, right? So like this guy is Q final, this guy is Q initial, and um, you start from T0 and go to T final here for simplicity in this uh, curve. Assume that T0 equals zero, but it could be non-zero. And this is T final. This is the normalized version of that, where the time is divided by the time F, TF. So it's just between zero and one. But in general, remember that in that video, I talked about uh, the criterion or the it's a multi-criteria function, the criteria for this function and how to find the switching times T blend and T final minus T blend how to select the velocity that you have some limits on it, the maximum velocity and find the T blend, right? So this, this is what we had. And if you remember the uh, uh, position, the velocity and the acceleration plots were like this, okay? So now we want to uh, have similar condition. We start from zero velocity, go back to zero velocity. And the acceleration we have here, we want it to have some limits. So basically, we choose this parameter AM, right? Or this negative AM here. And we want this to be a fixed number and no more than that. And we want to basically minimize this T, what? This T final, we want to minimize it. So if we want to minimize it, what should we do? And the simplest strategy is get rid of this middle portion where you don't change the velocity or the magnitude of it, the speed. Get rid of that and just keep going up uh, at a constant acceleration and then decelerate. If you get rid of that, you can convert this trapezoid to a triangle. So it is going to go like this and your curve is going to only have two parts, the initial parabola and inflection point and the second parabola. Okay, and again, as I told you, our acceleration only has two parts, AM and maximum AM, which is a given parameter. And the goal is to minimize this TF. As I said, the best way to do it is to get rid of the middle portion. Why? Let me show you why, and then we'll find the criteria for uh, this function. So why is it that you can minimize the T, fin uh, the T final? Here, the Q0 and Q0, these are two given values, okay? These are two of my given values. And T0 could be zero or non-zero. So, if you know the area under the curve of velocity per versus time is what? The change in position. So, this total area is QF minus Q0. Since those are given, this has to be a constant value. So now I want to modify this profile such that I keep the area under it constant, yet minimize this end time. Okay, how can I achieve that? And the other limitation I have is the slope here. This slope here and this other slope, they have limitations. So they are also fixed numbers. Okay, so these slopes here, these slopes are also what? They are also uh, constant. So I cannot have variable acceleration. I can only have a constant acceleration up to so much. Now what can I do? So this is what I do. So this is my strategy. I say, well, seems like this line in the initial part, I cannot change the slope of it. And I have to start from zero velocity. Those are the other limitations I have. I have to start from zero velocity, go back to zero velocity. So what I will do is 
I will have to use this line anyways. I have to start from zero with that slope, but I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to switch at T blend. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to keep using this line basically. Okay. And I'm going to keep going up, right? Let me uh, clean up this part so we can draw. So I'm going to uh, draw that line again. And I'm not going to switch. I keep going with that line. And then what? Then before reaching this middle point, before reaching the middle point between zero and final, with the current final, I'm going to uh, switch. Okay. So here we're going to make it a little bit before that. And then I'm going to use the same line with the negative slope as that one. And I'm going to go down like that. Okay. Something like this. Clearly now the slopes are the same. Let me uh, move this a little bit more. So the slopes are the same. Something like that. And clearly, you see that I kept the slopes the same. I kept the initial and final velocities at zero. My T final is clearly less than the previous T final. Okay. And the way that you choose this middle point is such that this area that you have uh, exceeded the previous time should be the same as what? This area. If the green and the blue area are the same, then you kept the area under the curve the same as q final minus q naught right and you have reduced t f to the minimum it could get now here you might need to extend it a little bit more probably right because it looks like that tri triangle is a little bit smaller than uh the um uh, the uh, parallelogram on the right right so you might need to uh, extend it a little bit but still you should be able to what? You should be able to get here. Look, you should be able to get something uh, smaller. As you can see right now, the uh, blue area and uh, the green area, they look to be what? They look to be almost uh, the same. Let me do it again. So this area now that is smaller and this area now. Okay, and again, you can reduce the TF. That's the best you can do when you have all of those limitations. Zero velocities at the two ends, a fixed maximum acceleration, and of course, fixed given uh, Q naught and QF. This is the best you can do, and this is exactly what we had earlier. Okay, so just a triangle profile, no trapezoid, no constant velocity. Go up at constant acceleration, go down at the negative constant acceleration, AM and negative AM. And so the question is, now what is this new TF? How much it is? And what is the criterion for each one of these two parts? So here, since they are quadratic each and they have constant accelerations. So you see here I have the uh, quadratic term for them. If you take second derivative, you see this guy becomes positive AM. This guy becomes negative AM. Now, each one of them will have a, a, a couple of unknowns, the constant term and the linear term, which we need to find from the continuity conditions and the initial and final conditions. So, and uh, here, T naught is in general non-zero. It could be non-zero. So Q at T naught, you plug in T naught in the top function equals Q naught. Q dot at T naught, the beginning velocity is zero. So you take derivative of that, plug in T naught in it. And if you look at this bottom equation, the only unknown in it is B. So I can find B. In the top one, there is also A. So now I'm going to plug this B into this top equation and solve for A. And this is going to be A. So now the top equation is all known. I do a similar thing for this bottom uh, function or the second part. Again, at, at TF, Q is QF. And at TF, Q dot is zero so again i plug them in from the uh, fourth one d is found plug it back into the third one c is found so now your q function is completely known okay this is your q function and again uh, this uh, does not need this is a typo here it does not need to be 
zero okay this guy could be t not there is no zero uh, reason for t not to be zero in general in this case now we have two also continuity conditions one is these two functions should produce the same number at the switching point right so the q from the left and the right uh, uh, parabolas should be the same at q at t, t switching and that's what uh, i have over here i set them equal and that will give you basically uh, this condition here this big uh, condition that you can see up here and then the derivatives of them should also be the same you see that the uh, velocity is also continuous if you set the velocities at the ts equal you can clearly see that because i have a solution for b and d remember that is d and uh, this guy is b if i plug them in and solve for ts ts is simply be found as the average of the two times which is obvious right this is completely symmetric so ts is the middle point now from this uh, new equation here now that i have all the unknowns and everything figured out ts and uh, so on the only unknown that remains in this equation one is t final because everything else is known and where does t final come from from this second equation if you look at the second equation it has t final in it so even if you uh, evaluate it at uh, the switching point there will be t final in it now that ts is known i'm going to plug it wherever there is ts i'm going to plug it in and now the only unknown will simply be what tf if i do a bit of algebra and simplify i will get this important equation which you see is a quadratic equation in terms of t final right and all the coefficients are constants so clearly from here i should be able to what t uh, final over there okay just like that and um, that's all we need to do so uh, i can find again tf from this quadratic equation that's ts this is the function and this will guarantee the minimum final po uh, time possible uh, subjected to all of those uh, basically uh, limitations so keep in mind that in general the problem of minimum time trajectory is way more complicated than this because uh, you might release many of these conditions like for example hey i don't want to have any minimum acceleration i don't want to start from zero go to final velocity or anything like that but uh, they do make absolute sense because remember your maximum acceleration can come from what maximum torque right so uh, but would you need to have it constant no right so you can start with something that is uh, any profile for acceleration that is under these limits right and still be able to what achieve what you want and maybe or maybe not you can get any uh, uh, smaller time but probably you won't because here we are using the maximum capacity of the system whenever i want to accelerate i use all the acceleration i have the max of it and when i need to slow down go back to zero again i use the max i have so this is going to be uh, physically meaningful and it makes sense that the tf that you find is the minimum tf okay again if you have to start from zero velocity go back to zero uh, velocity so a point to point basically uh, trajectory you might call it minimum time trajectory for uh, point to point uh, displacement hopefully the video was useful to you i'll see you in the next lecture thank you